God has something for you. And what he has for you is different from what he has for you. I will be teaching this evening by the grace of God. And I know that the Lord will give me grace within the limited time. My topic for this evening is the sovereign God. You know, as I was spelling the word sovereign, I said, wow, this reign, reign, to reign, to rule, to be in charge. So when we say sovereign, we are talking about somebody that is reigning over all. So when we say our God is sovereign, that means he's above all. That's why the Bible says, he that is from above is what? Above all. Daddy made us to understand yesterday that God does miracles, signs, and wonders according to what? His will. We are continuing from there this evening. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9, the A part. He said, for the eyes of the Lord is going what? To and fro the whole earth. To do what? To show himself what? Strong in the behalf of them that their hearts are what? Upright towards him. So in as much as God does miracles, signs and wonders according to his will, he's also looking for something. Something has to attract him for him to come and do that signs and wonders in your life. And those are the practical things we want to look at this evening. And as many that will be sincere, like the woman at the well, that will allow the Spirit of God to minister to them and decide to shift from where they are, you can never remain the same. I say you will never remain the same. So you need to open up your heart. That's why I asked us to pray that the Spirit of God will minister to you in your own way. Let's start with the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2. The Sovereign God. 1 Samuel chapter 2. I want to read from verse 1. Very quickly, from verse 1 to 10. And Hannah said, My heart rejoiced in the Lord. My heart is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. I can say I can't depend on you. First Samuel chapter 2. We continue from verse 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken and they that stumbled are guarded with strength. They that were full have hired for themselves for, have hired out themselves for bread and they that were hungry ceased so that the barren had born seven. And she that had many children is wax feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Verse 7. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and bringeth up. He raiseth to up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set him among princes and to make him inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he had set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. Verse 10. The adversaries of the law shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king. And exalt the horn of his anointed. Amen. Something happened to Hannah before she started giving this testimony about the personality of, of God. When you look at the testimony of Hannah, you discover that she has gone through certain experiences. She had seen diverse types of lives. Like some people will say, I've tasted poverty. 
now God has blessed me. I don't want to go back there again. Hannah had gone through a series of issues in her life. She has seen how the proud will come and do as if they own heaven. Hannah was without a child for a long time. She had seen what it meant to be just without a child. He had, she had seen what it meant to just be looking at those that had children. She had experienced different things. Emptiness. And she has also seen how in one day, people that look as if they had it all, they are so empty. And Anna made us to understand something, that there are two categories of people in life, the princes and the raised. Hallelujah. He said, God is the God that will pick up the beggar and he will lift him up. He will raise him up to sit among the princes. So the princes and the raised, you can't do what? You cannot differentiate. I am among the raised. The princes could be those that inherited it. Oh, you were born in a royal family. You were born with a silver spoon. But there are people that God will raise. Hannah saw, Hannah saw herself as one that was raised by God. She saw that she was almost empty, almost nothing, almost forgotten. Until God intervened. The sovereign God. The sovereign God that reigns over all. Today we want to look at Hannah. Hannah had been going to Shiloh every year. Just like many of us, meted members of this ministry, you've never missed any day throughout the Milk and Honey Conference. But sometimes, somehow, you can't even pinpoint to say what has God done. Yes, how can you have something different when you keep doing the same thing the same way? Hannah kept on going to Shiloh with the same attitude, with the same mindset every year. But on a particular year, this woman said no. Things got to change. She decided that she was going to do things differently. This evening we'll be looking at four different things that Hannah did that made her receive that testimony that had stayed, that had delayed over the years, that had looked as if it was impossible. You need to make up your mind this evening. You need to decide this evening. I'm not here for anybody. I'm not here for anything. But to seek the face of God. Number one, Hannah was dissatisfied. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 5. She became dissatisfied of her situation. Why did I say so? All this why. Hannah was always satisfied because Elkanah, now if you read that scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 1, the Bible says Elkanah had two wives. The one was Hannah and the second was Penina. If you ask me, I would say Hannah was the first wife. Her name was mentioned first. But she had no child. Now her husband still loved her. Her husband still adored her. So it did not bother her that she had no child. The Bible says every time the husband gave her a worthy portion, the husband showed her love. The woman will give her a worthy portion and we just share some things to Penina. So that gave her mind. She was happy that, ah, after all, my husband loves me. Even if I have no child, does it matter anything? It doesn't matter anything. So Hannah was just satisfied with just being the wife of Elkanah. She did not see having a child, not having a child rather, as an issue. So every year, Hannah was satisfied. She said, Penina, anything you like, you do. I am still the one that gets the worthy portion. Hannah was always satisfied with the worthy portion. Now, that particular year, she said, no. I can't just be having worthy portion. I deserve more than worthy portion. She became sober. Her countenance changed. Elkanah came again. Why are you like this? Am I not more than 10 sons to you? There are people in your life that will not allow you to move to the next level because they always make you feel that where you are is the only place you can ever be. If Hannah had listened to Elkanah, Hannah wouldn't have had her child. But that particular year, Hannah said, no, I cannot remain like this. I am not contented anymore. I need to move. If you read from 6 to 8, she did not allow Elkanah 
you're not tired of where you are. Where you are is what? He's tired of you. You need to shift. You need to make efforts. You need to decide. There needs to be a change in my life. I can't just remain in this position. I can't just be like this. There is more to my life. There is more I can be. What is your career? What is your profession? What are you doing? Housewife? There is nothing like housewife anymore. Because even in the house, like this period of lockdown, people are making money. A lot is coming in. So you can even be in the house and a lot will still be coming in. So you need to do something. You need to be dissatisfied with your position. I remember when I, I, I was growing up as a little girl, my mom would say, even if your husband is a president, you must work. Have your own money as a woman. You must work. And that mentality was in my head. If former, you must work. Until the Lord said, well, work for me first in the church. What am I saying this evening? It's not enough to just stay one place and be waiting for somebody to give you something. The person can give you today, give you tomorrow. The person may not want to give you anymore. So you need to be dissatisfied with where you are so that something can happen. The next thing Hannah did was to pray, verse 9 and 10. When Hannah became dissatisfied and said, my husband, you have treated me well, I know, but it's time for me to move out of this place. It's time for me to come out. It's time for me to, 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 to look out and see what God can do. I need to seek the face of God. And she did not even care about Penina. The Bible said Penina was there. Always dealing with her. <laughs> there are some people God will not take away from your compound where you are living. There are some in-laws God will not change. There are some bosses God will not change. Because they are the people that will push you into prayer. That we make the unimaginable things to begin to happen in your life. There are some lecturers that God will not change from being your supervisor. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Penina was there to move Hannah to pray. And the Bible says Hannah rose up. She went to the temple that year. Many of us, we only pray when we are in the church. Some of us, we only pray when you go to a man of God or you say, ah, there is prayer meeting. They are doing one prayer, whatever, one prayer house. The man of God saw vision. <sighs> it's wonderful. But you need to take the bull by the horn. You need to take time to pray. Like I've told us many times, sometimes when the Lord will reveal something to me and I will just pray casually, <laughs> The Spirit of God will just laugh inside of me. And he will tell me, if you know what the devil is doing, the effort the devil is putting in to make sure that this vision I just showed you now, that is not to your advantage, to make sure it comes to pass, you will know that this, your casual prayer, cannot match the activity of the devil. You must consciously pray concerning that matter in your life that needs a change. You must talk to God. You must bring God into you. Say, but I've been praying. That's why it's not just one thing that you need to do. Hannah prayed. She poured out her heart to God. She did not even know when Elkanah came in, when Eli, the priest, came in. She was just there saying, God, I have seen you doing great things. I've heard of so many things that you have done in the time past. There's an Igbo song that says, Iga humu bawe, Jehovah Iga humu bawe, Iga humu bawe, Jehovah Iga humu bawe, Nihi na ije bube, Imarama o, Iga humu bawe. God, you cannot see me and change. My problem cannot change who you are. Hannah cried unto God. In this conference, and even after this conference, you must learn 
to pray by yourself to God. You must learn to call upon God. Remember I said, you must be dissatisfied. You are not yet married. You don't have a child. You don't have a job. You're looking for admission. You're looking for whatever. Healing. Be dissatisfied. Why is it that when a child has been in the womb from day one, the child is just relaxed? But suddenly, they say labor. What is labor? The child is dissatisfied. The child is saying, ah, I'm bigger than this place. What kind of small place is this that they put me? The child will begin to kick. The leg will kick. The hand will kick. Take me out of here. Take me out of here. Take me as the child is as, as the child is kicking. The mother is my waist, my waist, my waist. The child is saying, Take me out of here. Take. Before you know, the child is looking for an escape route, any opening. And that's why when the child finds that opening, the opening that is so small automatically becomes big because the child has said what I must come out of this place so by the time the child pulls the head the, 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 the thing was open by force so beloved you need to be dissatisfied you need to call upon God you need to call upon the Lord and say God I know you are faithful I know you have done greater things before and I know you will do this for me. I tell you, we answer in the name of Jesus. The third thing you need to do, <laughs> you need to seek for God's gain in your need. What is there for God to gain in that your blessing? What is God going to gain when you buy that car you want to buy? What is God going to gain when you start that business? Let's look at verse 11 of that first Samuel chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but we give unto thy handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. Amen. Hannah had read about Samson. How no razor was upon the head of Samson and God used him mightily. Hannah also knew that the sons of Eli were not living right. So there was need for a prophet. There was need for somebody in the temple. Hannah knew God had need. So Hannah decided and said, God, if you will bless me with a man child, I will use him to meet the need in the temple. What is there for God to gain in your admission? What is there for God to gain in your marriage? What is there for God to gain? We remember the story in Luke chapter 12 where Jesus was the one telling the story about a man that had so much harvest and he looked at himself and said, Oh, my soul, you have worked so hard this year. Ah, if not for my plans, if for my strategies, my this, my that, and the Bible says that this man, he went ahead and he looked at his pan and said, wonderful, just sit down and eat and drink. You don't need to labor anymore. But the Bible tells us something in verse 20 and 21. That the owner of his soul came and said, you fool, your soul is taken away from you. Who will take all that that you have laid up? Now the key verse is verse 21. He says, so is everyone that layeth treasure here on earth, but is not rich towards God. That miracle, you are saying, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying. Why do you want it? What is there for God to gain? What is God's gain in that your miracle? In that your desire?
forever. And the Bible tells us that God heard it. And God said, wow, this is awesome. I need to do something. Now, in the midst of that, I want to bring out something also. The Bible says, as Hannah was praying, Eli came and said, why are you drunk? And after drinking, you're coming to the temple. And Hannah said, no, sir. I am not one of those daughters of Bidia. I'm only pouring out my heart. You know, as I read that, something struck me. And what was that? That even the daughters and the sons of Bidia are in the church today. They go out, they drink, they smoke, they fornicate, they commit adultery, they lie, they cheat, and they still come to the house of God. So Hannah said, no, I'm not one of them. I'm not like those. So the Lord is asking you, are you a son or a daughter of Bilia? You know, it's so comfortable for people today to go out and live their life the way they like, and they come to church, that's only when they are holy. That's only when they are righteous. That's only when they do things right. But when they are out in their business places, they don't care. They could cheat. They could lie. They could do anything. And I said, no, I'm not like the daughters of Bilia. That go out and drink and do all of that. And then come back. Beloved, if you are a daughter or son of Bilia, you need to change. Because time is running out fast. We need to change. God is looking for those whose hearts are perfect towards him. So he can show himself mighty. Hezekiah that our pastor was talking about. What happened? Why did God decide to fight for him? Because he arose and he reminded God all that he had done. He was living a perfect life before God. He was reigning as a just king. God wants to show himself mighty on your behalf. So, be ready. Praise the Lord. Let's look at verse 18 and 19 of that first Samuel chapter 1. That will give us the fourth thing that Hannah did. And she said, let thy hand made find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did, and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Hallelujah. Somebody say, and the Lord remembered me. She rose up in faith. Remember before she refused to eat? She was dissatisfied. She didn't want Elkanah to continue to convince her that everything was okay to just stay childless. But now that she had prayed to God, now that she had entered into a covenant, into a league with God, and the man of God had pronounced just like daddy has been prophesying to us concerning this meeting, the Bible says she rose up. Her countenance was no more like the same. Now, beloved, after you have been satisfied, after you have prayed, after you have sought for God's gain in your need, you need to act in faith. You need to act in faith. I've said this before when I was looking for admission. I wanted to read medicine. My, my score was not up to, so I decided to go for industrial chemistry. My score was far more than industrial chemistry score, cut off. But I applied for supplementary. I kept on waiting and waiting. Nothing was happening. I was waiting, waiting for them to call me. Nothing was happening. Until one day I rose up and said, ha, I better go there myself. And when I got there, I wanted to see the HOD. The secretary said, any previous appointment? I say, no, ma. He said, hey, he's busy. I say, ma, I can wait. He said, okay, wait. And I kept on waiting. She forgot me there, but I was waiting. And suddenly, she just looked at me and said, 
after a while, you can go. So I went in. And I told the HO this. Good day, sir. I came because I applied for supplementary for a long time. I've not seen, I've not heard from you and all that. And the HO said, what's your name? And he checked those that have been approved on his table. Mine was not there. And there was a heap under the table. And he asked me to check if my application was there. And I was checking and checking until I sought out my own from under the table. And I brought it out to him. I said, this is my application. And he looked at me. And he said, I love your courage. And that was out on my form. After all that things, you know, make, I preached to him also. When he saw my t-shirt, they wrote my man. It was God that moved me to wear that t-shirt that day. They wrote my man. And he said, my man. He just read it casually, my man. Who is your man? I said, ah, Jesus is my man. He said, Jesus, which Jesus? That's how you will be monopolizing this Jesus. Hey, trust me. I just said, ah, God. I said, no, Sal. Nobody is monopolizing Jesus. He's for everybody. In fact, if you ask him to come into your, he said, okay. Praise the Lord. And that was how he wrote on my form, hate all these candidates. And that was how I got admission. Now, assuming I will say I've applied, and I just sit at home, they must give me admission, they must give me admission. My application would have remembered, remained under that table. At least we come out. Especially in Nigeria. Outside the country, you don't need to do that. But in Nigeria, you need to follow up. Now, I just gave that as an instance. But now, you, what is your need? You need to take a step of faith in that direction. The Bible says, what you lay your hands upon is what he will prosper. I know somebody, he's living in a house. He's owing over two years. He's not working. He has a family. He has two children. Nepa bill he can't pay. In fact, Nepa went and cut off his life recently. Nepa will come. People that he bought something credit will come. He just keeps living with his wife and children. He is not working. He is not doing anything. When I say nothing, he's not doing anything. Morning will come. Night will come. Morning will go. Night. This man is not doing anything. Prayer cannot change his situation. So if you're like that, you need to rise up. You need to look for a skill. You need to learn something. You need to get hold of something if your need is finance. You need to take a step. I was just sharing with daddy yesterday. What happened during a day with the Lord? One of our grandma gave a prayer request that each time she wears heels, she begins to feel pain. That she doesn't want that old age symptoms and all that. So I told them that even me, I'm already praying. All those old age, pre menopause stuff, all those things, I'm not going to have it and all that. So I told the women, I said, let us pray. So we prayed in that line that all the old age symptoms and all that will not catch up with us. When we finished praying, <laughs> one of our mommies said, Mommy, wait. Oh, I agree with your prayer. But let me tell you something. <laughs> if you are praying that you don't want this old age symptom, but every day you will eat fufu, while you are eating the fufu, one bottle of coke is in your front. In the night, you will take a rubber. The next day, <laughs> and she said, if you continue like that, I don't know if God can answer this prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and I told them, I said, ah, this mommy is very correct. In as much as we are having faith and trusting God, we must also do what? Do the right thing. So the same thing the Lord is saying to somebody this evening. You need to rise up. If you're in a business and you know that your business is not perfect towards God, you need to do something about it. That's why there's a rise and fall. You 
do it your own way. It's as if, oh, you are moving high. Suddenly, you start from zero. When your path is supposed to shine. Hannah rose up. She took a step. There are some of us who are looking for the fruit of the womb. But every day, you and your husband, you're quarreling. Even when you want to meet, it's just because you're looking for the fruit of the womb. So you just, just, you just, you just try. Uh, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So you need to make things right. Whatever it is you're looking for. Some of us as ladies, you're trusting God for a husband. But the truth is that you're not ready. You're not ready to submit yet. You're full of your own knowledge and your own ways. So you need to prepare yourself for that blessing. The Bible says, Hannah rose up. She dusted herself. She ate. And she went home. And her husband knew her. And the Bible says, God remembered her. And I know the Lord is remembering somebody here tonight. In the name of Jesus. I say, God is remembering you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Now, when God has remembered you, how can you maintain your blessing? How can you keep your blessing? You need to continue in the ways of the Lord. We know the story in 2 Samuel chapter 6. If you read from verse 6. When the Ark of Covenants came into the land and uh, Uzzah wanted to help the Ark when it wanted to fall. And because of that, God slew him. David, a man after God's own heart. <laughs> he said, ha <laughs> ha. I can't take this ark. And as a sort of punishment, he took it to the house of Obedidom. As a sort of what? Punishment. Obedidom didn't have any word to say. He didn't have the power to revolt. So David took it there. And the Bible said within a space of three months, within a space of three months, that the ark was in the house of Obedidon. God blessed him in a way that it was nationally announced. Suddenly, the situation of Obedidon changed. Now, because of the noise of his blessing, David heard it and said, What is this? What I'm missing? He went and carried the ark back. Meanwhile, Obedinon has been what? Blessed. And I tell you, if his heart remains in the Lord, that blessing can never leave him. It will go from generation to generation. He's looking for those whose hearts are perfect towards him. That he will show himself mighty and strong. For what the enemy thought for evil, God knows how to turn it around for your good. But you need to change your heart. A lot of times we are so bitter. We are so angry with one person or the other. We are so, and God is saying, who was here? Bitterness, anger, envy. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Oh, humility. Ah, seeking for my gain, wanting to please me. And you begin to say, why, why, why is God blessing this person more than me? They are not even living right. <laughs> be judging. You will be there judging. People that are being blessed are being blessed. Obey the tongue was blessed. And that blessing would have remained as long as he stayed with God. But there was another man called Jeroboam. The Bible tells us that when Solomon 
praised. Now Solomon was among the princes. He just became a prince and then a king by inheritance. But Jeroboam was raised. And God gave Jeroboam 10 tribes out of 12 tribes. That was authority. That was faith. That was blessing. That was abundance. That was change of status. Before this time, he was even like a vagabond. A fugitive. Because he was running away from Solomon. But God, through a prophet, prophesied to him and told him that God was going to lift you up. And the Bible says God raised him. Let's look at 2 Kings chapter 12. From verse 26. God raised Jeroboam. <laughs> but Jeroboam messed up. Sorry, 1 Kings, not 2 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 26. And Jeroboam said in his heart, after he has become the king over the twelve tribes, he said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If these people go up to sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of the people turn again unto their law, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah, whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold, and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other in Dan. You see what a lot of people do after they are blessed? The Bible says, O oh, you foolish Galatians, how would you have started with God in the spirit? And you think you can continue in the flesh. Jeroboam did not put in any impute to become the king. But after he became king, because his own people were still going to Jerusalem to worship, just to obey the law of Moses, he said, if these people keep going to Jerusalem where Jeroboam is, one day they will not want to have me anymore. They will kill me and all of them will begin to worship Jeroboam. I better devise a means so that they won't need to go to Jerusalem anymore. So he decided to carve his own God and say, this is your God that brought you out of Egypt. Foolishness. That is what a lot of us we are doing today. God just gives you a bit of blessing. There is no gain for God in your blessing. To pay tight is problem. To help people is problem. To give in the house of God is problem. And God is just sitting back and looking at us. And say, how can I trust this with more riches? God is the owner of the earth. He has no business in the earth. The Bible says the earth he has given to man. But your heart needs to be perfect towards him so you can enjoy the riches of his glory. Now, you need to fulfill your vows. Remember Hannah? The Bible says after she wins Samuel, what did she do? What did Hannah do? She took him to the temple, not minding whether she will have another child. As far as she was concerned, she was okay. She had given birth, and she has given her son to the Lord. Every year, the Bible says she will sew different robes and take to her son with joy and gladness. She never murmured any day. And God looked at her. Let's look at this scripture. That's Second Samuel chapter 2. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. God is an awesome God. Sorry.
story, 1 Samuel. Did I say 2 Samuel? 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 2. It says, There is none holy as the Lord. There is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more ex so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. I want you to take note of that. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are what? Weighed. What does that mean? When God blesses you, he stays back and begins to watch your action. When God gives you a privilege, like sometimes I always say, some pastors, I remember when I was counseling a pastor's wife. Her husband is the general overseer of the ministry. And she was saying so many things and, you know, she was full of bitterness and anger because of the way her husband was handling issues. But the Spirit of God just led me to tell her something. And I told her, I said, see, let me tell you. Remember before you became a pastor's wife, you were first born again. It's because you were born again. That's why you became a pastor's wife in the first place. The same way so many pastors, you were forced a vibrant member of your church. You were forced a committed member of your church. Before God decided to lift you up to the post of being a pastor to shepherd these people. How are you doing the shepherding? How are you doing the work of God? Or probably in your place of work. You were on the lower cadre, but God decided to lift you up. You have forgotten that there was a time you were low. The Bible says, he is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Probably you are saying, since after I built down my house, nothing new has happened to me again. God has not done anything. I've been trusting God for this. God has weighed your actions. Remember what happened in Daniel chapter 5. In the case of Belshazzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar. When the Bible said there will appear the handwriting on the wall. Mene, mene, take care of us. You have been weighed on the balance and you are found wanting. He is a God of knowledge. If he weighs you like daddy will say, he does not want to weigh people that don't pay tight. He does not want to ordain people that don't pay tight. Because God, the Bible says, if you don't pay tight, you are, you are caused with a cause. How will he not stand against God? God is saying, this man is caused. And he will be saying, no, I bless you. Who is he to do that? By him, actions are weighed. An evil song says, What is happening to us? We are the cause. Don't put it on God. That's what the song says. He said, by him, actions are weighed. He gave Hannah one child. And he was looking, what would Hannah do? Hannah gave that child back to him. According to how she had said. God, give me this contract. God, give me this husband. God, give me this child. God, give me this. God, give me that. When God has done it, what are you doing with it? There's a book I'm writing. 